Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. Uh, right now, I'm going to invite Stacy to stay up here with me. Uh, if you remember last week, what did we talk about? Did we talk about the baseball cap of funness? No, what did we talk about, Amari? Okay, and what was our first piece of armor we talked about, Daddy? The belt of truth, right? The belt of truth goes around the middle of our body, and it, it's what supports most of the rest of the armor. Uh, it, it, it's the, the foundation of what we believe in. It's the truth that Jesus is God. Jesus is our Lord and Savior, right? Well, today, we're going to be talking about uh, the body armor of God, or the breastplate of righteousness. And let's read here what it says in uh, Ephesians. It says, uh, therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the, en resist the enemy in the time of evil. Does it say just put on like one piece at a time and like that one piece for that day and then another piece? No, it says the full armor of God every day, every day, the full armor of God. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. Wow. Body armor. That just sounds cool. Like, uh, it, it, we're looking at this knight here, uh, and he has a, a steel, like a metal clad armor over his, his chest that protects him from like swords jabbing him in the heart or in the belly. Um, you'll see Pastor Terry come up with his armor of a Roman soldier. Uh, but what kind of, what does armor look like today? Like when we think of armor, what do we what do we see today? In to, yes, I'm all right. But tanks, right? But what would uh, what would someone be wearing right now? Maybe a bulletproof vest. Flak. What's that? Flak vest. Yeah, flak vest. You know, it's it's armor in case maybe uh, they're getting a shot at and it resists the bullets. Um, so that's what armor looks like today. But but what we're, what when uh, Paul was writing this, armor to him is more like what Pastor Terry's going to show us shortly. It's it's. Um, it's metal, and it's maybe bulky, and it maybe look a little weird to us, but that was the symbol of armor to them. Uh, so uh, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, so we'll find out today that we can fight evil with righteousness, right? Right standing with God. Now, uh, righteousness means uh, we have good hearts and we make right choices, right? Thinking about how Jesus would want us to react to those situations, to, to respond to different situations. Uh, to fight God's evil enemy, uh, God gives us armor. So like I said, last week we talked about the belt of truth. This week, we're going to talk about the body armor or the breastplate of righteousness. Now, who would agree with me that evil is kind of gross? Evil's kind of yucky, isn't it? Right? No one likes to be around evil or see evil happening or even being evil. Uh, but uh, I want to invite you right now, if you have your night, your night coloring page, take and color in that belt from last week again and write truth next to it. But this week, you can color in the, the body armor or the breastplate and write righteousness on there, okay? Um, now, uh, when I think of evil, it kind of reminds me of food that I don't really like, like yucky, gross food. Because evil's just yucky. Uh, like when you eat it, you just want to spit it out. Yeah, uh, Stacy doesn't like peas, and I love peas. They're like the crunch in your mouth. That's, that's like my favorite thing. Uh, but me, I totally, totally dislike beets. Beets are the worst. I can't even stand looking at them. Can I have dark beets? Please go ahead. <laughs> We have beets in the basement, and then they'll be here until the second coming, I promise you. I will not open them. Uh, but we have, uh, I don't like mushrooms, not my favorite, unless they're on a pizza, then like the, you know, the, the gloriness of a pizza kind of covers up that yucky taste, uh, but mushrooms are my favorite on their own, and olives, I just, I don't like them. I try one every year, but I hate olives, I don't, and they're like gross, totally gross. Um, what's, let's call on a couple kids. What is your, what do you think is yucky? Uh, Titus, what's yucky? Cucumbers. Cucumbers, okay. Addie? Birthday girl Addie back there. Woo! It's tomorrow, right? Yes. What do you think is yucky? yucky? Oh, yeah, that's for sure. It is, yeah. 
That, that is a good answer, right? Uh, and one more, Jordan. What do you what do you think is yucky to eat? What's that? Oh, raw broccoli, huh? Okay, okay. I'm just the opposite. I really don't care for cooked broccoli, but I can eat raw broccoli all day long. I love it. Um, so uh, today, you know. No one wants to eat foods that are yucky, right? It's gross. In the Bible, Jesus talked about yuckiness inside of people's hearts, right? And he said that we can fight yuckiness with goodness. Let's say that together. We can fight yuckiness with goodness, right? Or, or like we're talking about righteousness. Now, we'll find out more about that today, but let's pray as we get started. Father, we're so thankful that you are so good. You are the definition of good. And everything about you is good, Lord. And we just pray that you will help us to uh, be more like Jesus. That when we make decisions, that we will uh, take and align it with how Jesus would respond. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, honey. Uh, right now, um, I want to invite our knight to get to come out. Uh, he is uh, Knight Ian. Now, last week, what did we talk about? We talked about his belt, right? His belt of truth. Now we're going to be talking about his breastplate or his body armor of righteousness. Can you see him already in that? No, not really. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Uh, but we're going to continue to talk about all these pieces of the armor as we continue with this series. But um, right now we got the belt and the body armor. Very good, Ian. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, Faith, I'd like you to come up here right now and I'm going to move your thing out here, if I can do it without tipping in profile. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. Oh, good. That was, I was most nervous about that one right there. So, um, today we've been learning about how we fight uh, evil with righteousness. Righteousness is a big word. It is a long word. Uh, it's a big word that means doing good things or making good choices because of Jesus' love in our hearts. I mean, anyone can do good things and anyone can make good decisions, but righteousness is doing it um, because of Jesus' love in our heart. It, it kind of filters out the way we respond to things uh, and through Jesus' love. Now, wrong choices can make kind of a mess. Like we were talking about yucky foods. Well, wrong choices can make a mess here, too. And uh, as you can see, Faith is um, doing a little painting here with a big brush. So um, she's painting inside of this triangle, and we're going to see if she can do it without going outside of the lines, keeping it within the tape. That, oh, man, she's already... She's trying hard to do it right, but it's, it's really tough to keep it inside that line. Uh, but we'll let her continue that as we talk. It's hard to keep paint off the tape using like a big sponge brush like she has there. Um, we can't do it perfectly. It's, it's hard to do it perfect. Even like the best painter has a tough time keeping the paint right along the line so it doesn't bleed onto like the ceiling or the different parts. Uh, so sometimes they'll put tape on there to help them. Uh, it can be hard to always make right choices, right? I I is it easy to do the right thing all day, every day? Oh, no. No, it is tough. Why is that? Well, for one, we have an enemy that is trying to take us down every moment of the day. I mean, that's his job. The enemy's job is to try and make us make the wrong step, to do the wrong thing, to make a mess, to make a poor choice. And all of us, sometimes we make poor choices. It, it just happens. And it can get us into a mess of trouble. Sometimes we choose to take something away from someone else. Maybe we'll, you know, I'll be playing with a friend and we'll see a toy that they have and we'll just take it because we want it. Um, we choose not to do what we've been told. Maybe we disobey. Maybe we lie or we steal or we, uh, you know, go sneak a cookie out of the cookie jar or, you know, hide food in our room or something like that. Uh, this all causes kind of a mess, especially if you leave that apple underneath your bed for like three weeks and then fruit flies come on. That's a mess, okay? That is gross. That's what evil does. Evil is a mess. Now, wrong choices like these can make a mess in our lives. Just like how painting with this big brush has kind of made a mess outside of the lines. But Jesus' love in us can 
make messy choices right again. So faith, how, how are we going to show Jesus' love taking away our messy choices? How are we going to do that? How can we show that Jesus' love makes messy choices right again? Look at that. Oh my goodness. That is an, how did you draw that nice straight line? We can't, can we? We can't just draw a straight line that or paint a straight line. But with Jesus' help, He makes those messy mistakes go away. So we can't be seeing them anymore. And in the end, we have that perfect triangle, don't we? Without that mess, without that overlap. Isn't that pretty cool? Now we can say, wow, Faith, look at that. How did you do that? Well, she couldn't do it on her own. But with Jesus' help, she was able to, he was able to take away that mess. Now, Jesus' loving us helps us make right choices and cleans up the mess, cleans up the mess of those wrong choices. Jesus' powerful love in us means we can fight evil with Righteousness. Now, if you have your Bibles, I invite you to open them up. Or if you want to listen along, we're going to read just a little bit of a Bible story here. Um, we're learning. We're learning that we fight evil. We fight evil with righteousness. Say that with me. Fight evil with righteousness. Right. Very good. In, in the Bible story, uh, in the Bible story in Galatians, or not Galatians, in Matthew, I'm going to read just a short excerpt here. Okay. Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 through 5, it says, Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The teachers of religious law and the Pharisees are the official interpreters of the law of Moses. So practice and obey whatever they tell you, but don't follow their example, for they don't practice what they preach. They crush the people with unbearable religious demands and never lift a finger to ease the burdens. Everything they do is for show. Wow. That is, that is crazy. So these people were teaching the law, but they weren't following it. Does that sound right? Does that sound the way, the way we should, should be doing things, the way we should live? No. But uh, in, this Bible story, uh, in this Bible story, Jesus saw that the Pharisees looked righteous on the outside. They looked good on the outside, but on the inside, their hearts were yucky. They were bad. Um, they didn't have God's body armor of righteousness protecting their hearts. Their hearts have gone sort of evil in a way. So what do you do when you, we think someone has a bad heart? How do we know that someone's heart is bad? Is it our job to make someone else right? Amari, is it our job to make sure that someone else is right? No, no, it really isn't, is it? Sometimes we're focused on everyone else that we forget the most important thing, seeing how God wants to make our own hearts righteous. Now, Jesus talked about that in Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, verses 3 through 5 says, And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye, maybe it's a little piece, when you have a huge log sticking out of your own eye? Can you imagine walking around with a big old stick coming out of your face, out of your eye? No, that would be tough, wouldn't it? And that's what, that's what Jesus is saying. He says, don't worry about one little thing that someone else is doing when, when you know what? You're probably doing something a lot worse. How can you think of saying to your friend, let me help you get rid of that little speck in your eye, when you can't see past the log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first get rid of the log in your own eye, then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Now, what's wrong with focusing on someone else, someone else's fault when you're really not right with God? You look like what? You look like a hypocrite. Right, right. Very good. It's not good to be a hypocrite, to tell someone, hey, this is the way you should act, but then you turn around and do the same thing or worse. That's not the way Jesus wants us to walk. Now, this verse shows us the importance of working on our own relationship with God first, to be in right standing with God first. We can't help others do what's right when we are not tuning into God's righteousness first. I mean, we need, we, we need to walk right first. But sometimes there's a benefit to helping our friends grow in their righteousness. Uh, so we can help others grow 
in their righteousness. Now let's look at a verse that talks about that. In Galatians 6, 1 and 2, it says, Dear brothers and sisters, if another believer is overcome by some sin, you are you who are godly should gently and humbly, gently and humbly, help that person back onto the right path. And be careful not to fall into the same temptation yourself. Share each other's burdens. And in this way, obey the law of Christ. So there it says we can help other people if they're off the wrong, wrong, on the wrong path. But that's if they're believers, believers of Christ because they should know better. Uh, these verses say to help other believers who was overcome by sin. That means it's not our job to judge people. It's not our job to point out every little sin in Christians either. We also learn that people who are godly should help others who overcome are overcome by sin. It goes back to what Jesus said. Get the log or that big stick out of your own eye before you try and peck a speck, pick, pick a speck out of someone else's eye. And the verses say to what? To gently and humbly. Are we supposed to go up and say, Amari, you can't be doing that. You know, Jesus wouldn't do that. So you can't do that. No, no, we need to be gentle. We need to be kind-hearted. Is that what Jesus did? No, he was very kind and loving and showed compassion when he was correcting others. He, he, and he showed by an example, too. Um, so we gently and humbly correct. In other words, help them find ways to make better choices instead of just uh, rooting for them to get into trouble or, or, or hoping they get into trouble and then they get caught. One way to make sure you're doing that is uh, think through the reasons you want to maybe tell about something. Maybe your brother or sister did something wrong. Maybe you should think about, okay, what is really the uh, outcome of this going to be before you do it? Is it really bad? Is there something that I can help them along with? Uh, think about that before you just go and tattle on something. Uh, you can ask yourself questions like, uh, is it because they want to get that person in trouble? Are they just trying to be mean? Or is it because they really care about that person and want what's best for them? So um, let's talk about a time that you just wanted to get someone in trouble. I remember um, I did this a long time ago when I was, when I was working as an employee where I am at, at the shop. Uh, and there was this other guy that was working there and he was you know, just not doing things the way they were supposed to be done. You know, There's a right way and there's a wrong way and then there's a way that kind of gets it done but it's not really the right way. And, and this guy kept on doing it this different way, not the way it should be. And every now and again, it would cause problems. It would break something. So I really wanted to tell the boss, say, hey, he is not doing this the right way. I, I, I really thought, okay, I want to get him in trouble. And, and, and if I remember right, I think I kind of told the boss, say, hey, you know, you got to keep an eye on this guy because he's not doing it the way he told me to. But that was how I was trying to correct someone. If you just want to get someone into trouble, that's not helpful. Helpful. But if you have a close friend who keeps making the same bad choices over and over again, and you help them along through that and show them what righteousness is, then you are giving them, you are wearing your armor and you can help them to put on their armor as well. So when we fight evil with righteousness, we do it by letting the body armor of righteousness protect our hearts, right? That's what the armor protects. It protects our hearts and the, the air we breathe and our stomachs. That example can be the best help of all to someone who is struggling with sin is by showing people what it looks like to put on your armor every day. So let's pray before I invite Pastor Terry to come up and, uh, and you guys have some coloring sheets there and stuff to keep you a little busy as we continue. Father, we're just so thankful, Lord, for your righteousness, Lord, that, that you above all are good and right, and we can learn from you. Uh, every step that we take, every move that we make, Lord, and I pray that we just, um, uh, you anoint our feet so that we go and do what's right in your words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.